designated time to be somewhere, so that's your indication. Amen? But living in this life, no man knows the time or the hour when the Lord will come. Amen. And what Paul was doing, he was telling Timothy, Timothy, the church needs to be watching. The church needs to be praying. Yes. You, as a minister of the gospel, need to know and see the signs and some of the indications that we are in peril this time. I grew up as a little boy and, and I was coming up, I often would watch and, and look at other men and, 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 and role models and, and, and it's a shame, but well, well, it is not a shame because we would always look at stature of men to set a goal or mark, whether it be an elected official, whether it be a minister, whether it be an athlete, whether it be a teacher, whether it be somebody that we wanted to look up to, to be somebody. Amen? And I'm saying that this morning because Timothy looked up to Paul. Timothy knew that Paul, when he wrote to him and talked to him, and when he wanted him in the Lord and he started to leave him in the Lord, he knew when Paul would write him, he would be writing for his own good and for the good of people that was under Timothy's ministry. This morning I've come to tell you that perilous times are here. And when I began to read the different things and the different signs and the different clues that Paul wrote to Timothy, I had to be quiet to myself. Because the things that I'm reading today, Paul wrote that to Timothy some 2,000 years ago. The only thing changed is that we have newer things. We have bigger things and better things and transportation and all those things. And I'm going to get to my teaching, but I want to lay the foundation. I don't want to get confused this morning that when Paul told Timothy, he didn't have his eyes on any one particular person, but he had his eyes on human being and humanity from a sinful standpoint. Amen. I don't know about you, but coming up, I always had to look, I always respected the office a president. I've always respected the office of government. I always respected the preachers, the teachers. I always respected my elders. So that that's how I was taught. So it's not nothing wrong when I preach and teach that I look to those who I look to, but I see the things that God is saying in His Word that they're not. So that's the only judgment. And people quick to say, "Oh, you judging preacher? Oh, how will I know the difference from right and wrong?"
use a curse word in front of my mouth. Y'all want to go better than that? Come on, we should go better than that. My children in my house have never heard me curse. Now, if you don't believe me, that's your problem. But I'm telling you, there was a standard that God expects for me and women to have the to see the living for God. And the example is God with you. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Church, we just have to be grateful. We just have to be thankful to the Lord. I know it might not be like it used to be. I know it might not be as smooth as it should be. But when the Lord bless you, we, this morning, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for being able to breathe on my own. I thank you for being able to see. I thank you for being able to hear the walk and talk in the touch. The things that we used to take for granted should not be taken for granted. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are my turn. For men shall be unholy. But the Bible declares, be holy, for I am holy, said the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. It is amazing how people want to pray to a holy God, but live it a unholy life. Amen. Let this man be you that's in Christ Jesus. I don't know about what's going on in your life. Truth breakers. We got friends and families and associates tell us one thing. 
saying, next thing you know, I've changed my mind. We got different things, truth breakers. But guess what? They're making truths for sin. If you don't tell nobody, I won't tell nobody. Come on now. But for righteousness, think about it. Moving on. Hallelujah to Jesus. Truth breakers. False accusers. Oh, nobody did never told up. Nobody never said nothing false about you. Everybody just tell the truth on your own. False accusers had all many men in prison behind a lie. Right. Just had a gentleman get out and you heard him saying he was 37 years he's been in prison because of somebody lied.
some things that you have to work with your hand. But then when you start talking about being a lawyer, a doctor, don't talk about being an astronaut. And it was unheard of how to be president coming up. But we know not all those things. But then you got something so high-minded. Man, what you, what you, what you want to do next year? Man, I, I want to be a rapper. But you know, you can sing, no. You know music, no. But I remember them songs that I, I know how to sing. But what grade you in? Man, I quit school in the fifth grade.
And as I talk about the phone and the Facebook and all that, please, young ladies, women, don't send me those bad pictures. I don't want them. Please, young men, keep your clothes on. I don't want that on my Facebook. If I had some attitude people in there, I got an app for it. Off my book. <laughs> Amen. You know what I would put? I'd have a device. It would, it would say, eh, reject it, get off my face. And you know, I'm not just, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it positive. I know some might say it because I read about you. Love and love your own self. Proud and most of the I'm going to delete you off my page. Fine. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to preach to you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to let you know that God wants you to go to heaven. And if I offend you with the preaching and the teaching, this might not be the sight for you. But if you want change in your life, man up and woman up.